Hello everyone, I'm Tong Miao, a senior researcher in Tencent. Today I'm going to talk about flexible wider area network, flexible one, software hardware co-design for cost-effective and resilient optical backbones. Traffic demands on cloud wide area networks are growing rapidly, driven by emerging applications. For example, during the COVID, the ones supposed the Tencent meeting application to connect billions of people across the world. The recent popular artificial intelligence model training workload leads to the rapid growth of data center to data center traffic, which also requires ones for inter data center connection. Cloud providers respond to traffic growth by augmenting one capacity. But how are the one capacity augmented and how are the level three one capacity provisioned by the level one optical backbone? Let me give a simplified example. Assume that we have a level three IP link between two data center sites. If we zoom into one end of the IP link, we see that right after the root port, there is a terminal device called optical transponder that converts the signal from the electrical domain to optical wavelengths. Then the signal is transmitted in the optical line system through mass, which is verified into the fiber cable for data transmission. Each wavelength will occupy a specific spectrum in the fiber. The direction of each wavelength is configured in the rodent. However, long haul one capacity is expensive. Introduced by those optical hardware devices, which are billion dollar assets, fibers, transponders, equipment in optical line system are the key contributors. In this talk, I will present a novel system that provisions cost-effective one capacity while resiliently address network failures. But this is not easy. It's very challenging to achieve this. I'm going to walk you through several important building blocks to achieve this goal. Let me start with the background. Traditional optical backbone is always fixed grid, where all the optical hardware devices run on the same rigid spectrum grid. Specifically, each wavelength generated by optical transponder is bound to a fixed channel spacing of 75 gigahertz, although it provides three types of wavelengths with different data rates. Accordingly, the equipment in the optical line system provides a fixed passband of 75 gigahertz. Then we present several existing issues to multiphase flexible. The main goal of network op operators for optical network is to reduce the hardware costs, such as spectrum usage in fiber and transponder number. On the other hand, network failures are inevitable in the optical backbone, so one should be resilient to network failures. We measure hundreds of optical paths in a large-scale production, where a most important observation is that 15% of optical paths are less than 300 kilometers, which is much shorter than the optical reach at 3 100 gigabits per sec. The Shan Hartley theorem states that the maximum data rates behind on the channel spacing and the signal noise ratio. Once the length of optic pass is short, indicating less noise introduced, thus the SNR is higher, so the signal can be aggressively modulated in a high format to support high data rates like 800 gigabits per sec. In practice, extremely high modulation may bring large optical impairs. On the other hand, we could reduce the channel spacing with such high quality signal. However, only reducing channel spacing does not reduce the transponder number. We then use a representative example to quantify the hardware waste of existing optical backbone. Assume provisioning 800 gigahertz bits per, per second one capacity as the length of 300 kilometers. For the traditional one, we need three pairs of transponders occupying 225 gigahertz spectrum wise in the fiber. A more attractive approach is to introduce new type of transponders that provide more data rates per wavelength by increasing channel spacing. For such short distance, we only need one pair of transponders occupying 150 gigahertz spectrum wise to provide the same one capacity. And the same spectrum efficiency is close to six. Furthermore, optical failures are inevitable and optical restoration is a recently advanced solution to address fiber cuts. Our measurements of a production one shows that 90% of restored optical paths is longer than its original path. Existing optical backbone is not effective. For example, when the fiber primary path fails, the wavelength should be reconfigured to the restored path. However, it's 1,200 kilometers which exceeds the optical reach at 300 gigabit bits per second. The wavelength should lower its achievable data rate to 200 gigabits per second. Thus, capacity cannot be fully revived, which may affect the network traffic. A more attractive approach is to revive all the capacity, even if the result path is longer. The flow in fixed optical backbone motivates us to design novel, flexible one for our structure. However, it's no travel due to both system level and the algorithm challenge. Firstly, existing optical hardware devices operate on a rigid spectrum grid. It's challenging to support extremely high data rates at a large spectrum wide. We should introduce the flexible hardware. 
However, the flexibility at heavyware introduced a new practical problem in a multi-vendor optical paper. Configuring those devices for hundreds of optical paths from multiple vendors is more prone to spectrum-related issues, such as spec channel conflicts and channel inconsistency. The spectrum issues will eventually lead to the loss of capacity. The flexibility at the optical layer offers new algorithm problem. It is challenging for cloud providers to choose optimal decisions such as transponder number, transponder formats, with the goal of providing a cost-effective optical backbone at the planning stage. On the other hand, when there is an optical failure, such as fiber cards affect multiple IP links, it's challenging to provide an optimal restoration plan because there are several options for restoration. Then we present the detailed design and the implementation of FlexiWare. The goal is to design a novel flexible one infrastructure. To address the rigid issues, FlexiWare introduced channel spacing variable hardware to effectively utilize spectrum. To address spectrum related issues, FlexiWare leveraged a centralized controller to coordinate the device. To address the algorithm problems, FlexiWare provides two algorithms that find the best network planning strategy and the optical restoration decision. At the hardware set, we simply buy the transponder into a control unit and several key components. Traditional transponders have three parallel workflows, which are not adjustable components such as fixed FEC and fixed channel space. To break this limit, we partially cooperate with the vendors to design spacing variable transponder. The key components in SVT are adjustable. The multiple combination of FEC, channel spacing, and modulation enable to make the best use of spectrum results to carry the one capacity for the distance required. This table shows the detailed parameters of SVT. There are multiple choices according to the length of optical paths, data rates, and signal carries. As the wavelength channels Spacing provided by transponder changes. We introduce a core space WSS that reduce the spectrum granularity of grid from 75 gigahertz to down to 12.5 gigahertz, namely pixel-wise WSS. Therefore, the spacing of the passband is adjustable based on the number of pixels selected, adapting to the wavelength channel spacing. The flexibility at the optical layer will introduce spectrum-related issues in multi-vendor optical backbone. To overcome this, we introduce a standard device model to abstract device so that a centralized controller interface with device in a vendor agnostic manner. The centralized controller then holds a holistic view of the optical device. For those optical devices that have wavelength passes, the centralized controller uses the same configuration parameters of the spectrum to configure those devices. For those wavelengths generated by transponder passing through the same fiber, the centralized controller configure different spectrum for them. The flexibility at the optical layer introduces new challenges for cloud provider to provide a cost-effective planning strategy. Although provider have existing fiber and equipment in OLS deployment, reducing the spectrum usage in the fiber is equivalent to saving the hardware cost, since the total spectrum for long-haul transmission is limited. On the other hand, the marginal cost of provision capacity in the cloud is dominated by the extra transponders. Flexi1 formulates the problem of one capacity provisioning with the goal of minimizing both the hardware cost. There are several constraints, such as bandwidth capacity constraints, optical rates constraints, spectrum conflicts constraints. The audience can refer to paper for more details. Finally, we present the gain of Flexi1. We obtain a, the demand of bandwidth capacity of each IP link in the production and evaluate the performance by increasing the bandwidth capacity scale. We compare Flexi1 with traditional optical backbone, 100G1 and Red1. Flexi1 is the most cost effective because it requires the least number of transponders to provide the same bandwidth capacity. Flexi1 saves transponders by 57% at the bandwidth capacity scale of 1 as compared to red one, the spectrum usage is also reduced by 36%. On the other hand, Flexi1 supports the bandwidth capacity scale up to eight times, which is larger than 100G1 and the red one. The link spectral efficiency refers to the amount of data transmit over a specific spectrum wise. Flexi1 is the most spectrally efficient because a transponder dynamically adjusts the formats of data rates and channel spacing to feed the transmission distance. Finally, we must revisit the optical restoration ability of Flex1 to address network failures. The goal of optical restoration is to maximize the restoration capacity with the existing optical hardware. There are new constraints such as restored capacity constraints, transponder number constraints. The audience can refer to paper for more details. 
we further introduce Flex One Plus, which sacrifice half of the transponder safe bigger through the restoration capability distribution in all failure scenarios. We observe that Flexi One Plus performs better than Red One. In conclusion, Flexi One introduces facing variable hardware at the physical layer and utilizes a centralized controller to avoid spectrum related issues. Flexi One provides the optimal network planning algorithms that reduce hardware cost while continuing to meet up eight times the present day demand. Flexi One shows superiority to address network failures. That's all. Thank you.